Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Duffel Backpack from Monarch, which has been a surprisingly spacious and versatile travel bag that takes some of the elements that I love from travel backpacks and duffel bags and combines them into a really interesting experience. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what it's been like to use this over the past couple of weeks. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar travel bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the overall aesthetic, the bag has a pretty modern look that feels in line with many of the other popular travel bags that are currently on the market. It does have some more technical touches, a few attachment points, some webbing, handles, so it's not the most minimal travel bag but it's still a versatile aesthetic that I think is gonna work well in a variety of environments, whether you're traveling or exploring a city. As far as the materials, the bag feels pretty solidly built. This exterior fabric feels kinda of like a polyester, and it's made out of 50 recycled water bottles, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Seems like it's gonna hold up well to rougher usage and the rigors of travel, and also offer a decent amount of weather resistance, maybe not as much as something like ballistic nylon or x-pack but still feels like it does a pretty good job and then you have some well protected zippers all throughout i like that these have kind of an aqua guard covering to give you a little bit more peace of mind if you happen to get caught in a little bit of rain i don't believe these are ykk i haven't seen any of the branding here regardless they have worked reliably and they seem like they're going to hold up well over the longer term Continuing along the outside of the bag, on one side you have some rows of webbing that are gonna be great for clipping on additional accessories with a carabiner. If you wanna carry a hero clip, maybe some hand sanitizer, anything that you want to just be able to hang on the outside that doesn't fit inside. And always nice to have a couple of these. And then on the side you have some larger loops that seem to be made out of this sort of faux leather-like material. I'm not entirely sure what you would normally use these for. I guess they could be a good spot for uh, clipping on additional accessories or maybe something like a, like a tripod or a selfie stick or something. Um, I didn't really end up using these too much, but still good additional functionality for a certain type of item. And then at the top, you have a very nice carrying handle, reinforced, it's got a nice amount of padding, really kind of seat belt like material. So it definitely feels like you're gonna be able to pull this in and out of a trunk or an overhead storage compartment comfortably. And at the top, you have the duffel style handles that you can use to carry it. These also feel very durable, nice material here. They have this grip area with the snap closure so that you can easily carry it when it's in duffel mode. Lots of padding here. So even though this can get pretty heavy when it's packed out, this is gonna help just make it a little bit more manageable. And while we're on the top, I'll also call out that you have some attachment points to pair with the included duffel strap. So if you're gonna use this like a regular duffel bag, great to see that they've included a long strap that does have some good padding on it. So whether you're wearing it on your shoulder, crossbody, you have a lot of flexibility. And you know, as long as you make sure that the padding itself is on your shoulder when you're wearing it, it's gonna be pretty comfortable even when it's a little more packed out. You do have the ability to fully remove the duffel strap, which is nice if you just wanna have a cleaner look or if you're gonna be using this in backpack mode, which we'll take a closer look at in a little bit. So great to see the flexibility that's provided here. You don't have the ability to remove the handles or really hide them, but if you use this closure, you can still kinda of just keep everything a little bit more neat. And then as far as the capacity, the bag comes in at about 40 liters, which is a really great one bag travel size in my opinion. I was able to hold all the items that I would normally take on a one or two week trip pretty comfortably. This is normally the size that I feel comfortable taking onto a variety of domestic and international airlines without feeling like it's gonna get checked. I'm always a fan of duffel bags in particular because they tend to be a little more flexible and easier to squeeze into a tighter overhead space. Now, with 40 liters of capacity, when you pack this out, it can hold quite a bit and it can look a little bit bigger when you're wearing it, but it still doesn't feel overwhelmingly big, it's still manageable for navigating crowded areas and also jumping onto public transit. Taking a look at the harness systems, one of the cool things about this bag is that it can be used as a backpack as opposed to just a pure duffel. The straps are hidden away in a compartment at the bottom. It has the same protected zippers that we saw across the rest of the bag. And so this unzips to reveal the back panel and the straps. 
You also have a removable waist belt that you can use for this size of bag that can be helpful. And so the straps can be tucked away behind the back panel for when they're not in use. And I do like the amount of padding that's been included with the straps. The bag has been quite comfortable to wear even when it's a little bit more packed out. You know, the padding here is robust. On the inside, you have a breathable material to help prevent moisture from building up. The straps also have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's more packed out. There's good reinforced stitching here at the top. And then you also have an adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. You do have some strap keepers included, which is nice to help keep everything a little bit neater. And then you have these butterfly clips that you pair with an attachment point at the bottom for actually attaching and securing the straps. One thing that's always interesting with this style of bag where you can kind of hide the straps away is this flap that ends up sort of extraneously uh, available after you unzip it. So what I've done is actually roll it up because you can't fully remove it. Uh, we saw this with bags like the Manal Carry On 3.0. You just kind of roll it up and it tucks away into the bottom. And then the back paneling has been really, really comfortable. I love the implementation here. Plenty of padding that's pretty robust, well distributed all throughout the back. You have the same breathable mesh that we saw on the straps. And there's also a nice amount of elevation to create these air channels that are gonna provide a good amount of airflow while you're walking around throughout the day. One last note while we're on the back panel is that you also have a luggage pass-through that's gonna allow you to rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. And then, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, you do have the ability to add and remove a waist belt that has a similar style of padding to what we saw on the straps. So great for just helping to alleviate some of the weight from your shoulders and to stabilize the pack while you're on the go. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag has a nice variety of pockets all throughout. On one of the sides, you have an admin type compartment that has a pretty nice wide opening zipper with some internal organization for the items that you might be grabbing more regularly while you're on your trip. This is where I have kind of housed all of my tech items, particularly if I'm traveling for work. Always nice to be able to grab these quickly while I'm resting the bag next to me. And so you have a couple of mesh slip pockets. I like that they have some elastic to just give you a little more flexibility with what they can hold. It also helps keep the items in place. So starting off on the left, this compartment has my mouse, then I have a pair of Apple AirPods, and then you have a larger one that's almost the same size of these two first ones where I stored a portable battery and a wall adapter for my laptop and my tablet. And then behind those, you have a couple of zippered compartments that have this nice, almost padded material. It's a little bit thicker, so it feels good for holding something like my portable hard drive, I have my Samsung T5 hard drive in here, and that fits in there easily. There's still some leftover space, and what I have here at the moment is also some additional cables. And then on the other side, similarly sized zippered compartment, perfect spot for storing documentation while you're traveling, maybe your passport, wallet, I currently have a notebook, and my air card holder. At the top or side of the bag, depending on if you're using it as a duffel or a backpack, you have another large compartment that is gonna be great for holding some of the bulkier accessories that you might be grabbing regularly during your trip. I like that there's some internal organization here as well, but even without that, there's just a good amount of volume at the moment. What I have resting at the front is my Tom Bin Ghost Will pouch, and then I also have a deck of playing cards. And on the back, you have some deeper slip pockets that have enough volume to hold something larger like my sunglasses with their hard shell case and that goes all the way down to the bottom. And then you also have one next to that. In this one, I currently have a lightning cable with a power brick to charge my phone, as well as my GoPro. And then on the other side of the duffel, you have a couple more of those loops that we saw earlier in the video, as well as an elastic mesh outer slip pocket. I wasn't really sure what to use this one for, as it's a little shallow, particularly when the rest of the compartments are packed out. I feel like, something that I'd place in here might fall out, so it could be a spot to put some snacks or something that I'm grabbing while I'm carrying this like a duffel, but didn't really use this compartment too much. Still good to have it there in case you find a particular use case that I missed. And then you have here what is, I believe, meant to be kind of a water bottle pocket, so it's zippered, but this is a deep compartment that I was able to use to hold my 20 ounce water bottle. That fit in there very comfortably, even though I had the main area pretty packed out probably hold something a little bit bigger, but it does start to share space with this area and it can feel kind of tight. So you have to keep that in mind as you're packing everything out, but still really like that you have something that you can use to hold 
a bottle or maybe an umbrella or something taller and the fact that you can actually zip it up if you want to use it for something a little bit more sensitive that you don't want slipping out. Up next we have the laptop compartment and I really like the size of the zipper here. This is meant to hold up to a 17 inch laptop I believe. This is a really big opening here, well protected zipper. You don't have the ability to lock it uh, but still nice that you have just something so big and that is easily accessible without opening the rest of the bag up. And so plenty of space here. Currently what I have is a 13 inch MacBook Air but you can see that that's kind of swallowed up by this compartment. You have some good padding here on the inside. You have kind of a softer material. It's not fleece lined. It feels almost like kind of a gel like material. Uh, so still a little bit nicer than your standard uh, liner inside of, of a travel bag. The bottom feels like it's pulled up a little bit or like there's a good amount of padding. So when you place your bag down, if you're carrying this like a backpack, it doesn't feel like your laptop is making contact with the ground necessarily. So nice implementation there. And so pull my device out. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside and it comes up a decent amount. So even if you happen to have a thicker device, it should be able to fit in there comfortably. Of course, if you pack out this main area a lot, you may start to feel some of that tightness for laptops. I'm always very wary of my screen getting damaged. So I try not to overpack. And one of the things that's interesting is this placement makes sense if you're using this as a backpack because it has the laptop close to your back. But if you're using this as a duffel bag, I did feel uncomfortable sometimes placing this down and having all the weight of the rest of my stuff landing on my laptop. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. Didn't notice any issues, but you know, most of the time I preferred to use it as a backpack and keep the device close to my back. And you know, I just had to kind of be very careful as I placed the bag down when I used it as a duffel. The last external compartment that I want to call out before moving into the main area is this compartment that is meant to work as a shoe compartment. So it's on the bottom or on the other side, again, depending on how you're holding it. You can tell this is the shoe compartment because it has some ventilation here so that, you know, if you have some sweatier shoes or you're placing anything with moisture, it's going to be able to air out, which is a nice touch. And then it has a wide opening zipper. And I'm always a fan of having a separate shoe compartment in a travel bag. I know that's something that not everybody uses. There's plenty of bags that they sell to keep your shoes separate from your stuff. But I like when it's sort of built in like this to just kind of help keep everything separate from the main area. And so plenty of space in this compartment beyond the shoe compartment. You actually have just this pocket that you can use to store additional accessories. If you have a jacket, dot kit that you want to access easily, or just an additional pair of sandals or flatter shoes, you can do so. But then you have this mesh zipper divider here that actually separates uh, the shoe compartment from the rest of the main area. It does take up volume once you use the compartment to hold some shoes, but you can see that it has this liner here, which uh, just keeps everything protected. At the moment, what I have in here is a pair of 11 and a half uh, Nike free runs. These are some of the running shoes that I might travel with. And I just wanted to show something a little bit bulkier than the Toms or other flatter shoes that I would tend to pack in a travel bag. So even with this size and style of shoe, I think you could fit something a little bit larger. Um, you know, so your mileage may vary depending on whether you're carrying boots or dress shoes or flatter shoes. You could probably fit a couple of flat shoes into this compartment, but for my 11 and a half size shoes, it was able to fit comfortably while still allowing me to hold the items that we'll take a look at in a little bit in the main area. Here you can see the liner. Uh, you can pull it out so that you can clean it, you can allow it to air dry. And what's unique about this bag is you actually have the ability to remove it if you don't want to use it. I've seen some bags where you can just kind of hide the uh, shoe compartment away, but it has this zipper that would allow you to remove it. And then this could just be a way to access the main compartment a little bit more quickly or while you're wearing this as a backpack. So really like the flexibility that's provided there and that, you know, you have the option to use it if it makes sense or not. And then moving into the main compartment, this has kind of a traditional duffel style opening. This area is lockable. I did think it was interesting that this is the only compartment that's lockable. It might have been nice to be able to lock at least this sort of admin area here on the side as it's where I would want to store my, my passport, wallet and things like that. So great to at least see that the main compartment does have a standard sort of zipper that's going to allow you to lock it with a TSA approved lock. And then you have nice visibility into the main compartment. Again, 40 liters of space. You, this can really hold quite a bit of stuff. 
And diving into the items that I have here, as mentioned a little bit earlier, this is loaded out for a week or two of travel with my standard sort of packing cube setup. I like that it has a pretty simple layout. It's just kind of a large bucket of space to hold all the items that I like to travel with. And you can see that it's not overly packed out. There's still a little bit of capacity, so much so that I was able to squeeze in the Monarch Sling. I'll be doing a separate video for this. This is a pretty impressive and robust kind of EDC solution for when you arrive at your destination. You can also use this while you're traveling, just slinging along the front while you're wearing the travel backpack. But I think that this packs down flat enough that it was able to fit in there easily. It doesn't take up a ton of weight or space. So really awesome solution there. Excited to do the video for that. And then beyond that, I have my Toms, which I always travel with, a dop kit. I have my packable rain jacket. And then I have, of course, my packing cubes. I have the larger Peak Design compressible packing cube and the larger one. Those all fit in there very comfortably. And now with this area a little bit emptier, you can get a better look at the inside. I like that it has a light lining here. So you have a little more visibility. You can get a better look at the shoe compartment and how far it comes in. If you choose to use it and fill it up, it is gonna take up that space. Again, you can remove that if you want to. And then on the inside, you do have some internal organization that I didn't really end up using because everything else was kind of contained in all the other pockets that the bag has, but you have a zippered mesh compartment here that's gonna be great for maybe some medicines, additional cables, things like that. And at the top on the lid, you have another mesh zippered compartment that might be good for a laundry bag or you know a smaller jacket, maybe some socks. You know, just I love that you have the options to kind of keep everything separated and easy to find, but if you don't wanna use them, they just stay out of the way. You can organize everything into cubes. So you also have, before I forget, it's kind of hidden here on the back, a larger zippered slip pocket here. Again, so just additional dividers. And I really like the layout of this main area and the amount of space that it provides. It can really hold a ton of stuff, super flexible, and I really like how well thought out the bag is, whether you're using it as a backpack or a duffel. And if you're looking for something spacious, modern, that's gonna offer a good amount of protection for your tech and just a lot of space for your trip, and this is gonna be a really solid option to check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience using the duffel backpack from Monarch over the past couple of weeks. You can currently purchase this on the company site for about $175, so definitely a bit of an investment, but considering the features and the build quality that it has to offer and how rare it is to find a more premium travel bag for under $200, it feels like a pretty reasonable price and it's gonna compare well against some of the other travel bags in this price range. If you're interested in checking out some of these similar alternatives to this, I'll include links in the description below to some of the duffel bags that I've looked at recently, like the GORUCK Kit Bag 2.0, and the Air Travel Weekender, as well as some of the more hybrid options that I've looked at on the channel, like the Nomadic Travel Bag and the Matador Seg 42. And I'll also include links to some of the popular travel backpacks that I've looked at recently, like the Tortuga 40 liter travel bag, Pact has a new travel backpack that's been released recently, the Manal 3.0, as well as the Roundup video that I did on some of my favorite one bag travel options of the past couple of years. With that being said, the Monarch Duffel Backpack holds up pretty well against all those options. And if you're looking for a spacious, versatile, and durable bag that comes in at under $200, and that's from a company that's doing some really interesting things with recycled plastics, then I definitely recommend you check this one out. And I'm curious to hear what you all think of the Monarch Duffel Backpack and how it compares to some of the other popular travel bags that are currently on the market. And if there's any similar options that you think that I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I want to thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.